In order to automate an application on two or multiple devices, the first condition we need to happen is to have multiple APM instances so that each device has its own APM server instance to run the application on. As I was telling you in the beginning of this uh, tutorial, the first condition you must uh, put into place in order to have multiple uh, APM instances is to declare different ports. So each server will have its own port to execute the commands and to deliver these commands to your uh, emulators. In uh, today's series, we are going to go through the most important uh, capabilities that you can put uh, at the start of your uh, APM server instance. And I will guide you through some uh, very used capabilities uh, and I will try to explain for each and every one of them why it's important to uh, declare it when you want to start up your Appium server. So we have this link. I will uh, leave you the, the link in the description. Here on the official APM uh, website, you can find the general capabilities section and here you can uh, browse through all the capabilities that uh, you want to uh, include. If you look closely, some of the capabilities such as uh, automation name, we have already uh, declared inside our test when we opened up the, the application. So if you look closely, the capability called automation name was declared at the start of my application, but I can very well declare it inside my terminal once I start my APM server. So for uh, Android, there are a few capabilities that we should put in place in order for the tests to run smoothly and that is because uh, each device is connected to your operating system and to your APM server via a ADB server uh, that is sending and receiving commands so when you want to do parallel testing you might as well separate the ADB commands so you will have one APM instance with a group of ports for the ADB commands and another APM server instance with another set of ports that will be used for the second instance. Let's, let's browse through these uh, capabilities and here you can see the Android only uh, section where uh, we have, let's see, some uh, capabilities that are uh, specific to, to Android, like this ADB port and system port. So when you start an ADB server by default, let's, let's go ahead and do that now. So I will say ADB skill server, ADB start server and you will see that by default the server is starting on port 5037 now this means that all the physical devices and all the emulators connected to your operating system will use this instance of adb server to communicate with whatever program you have uh, behind it so for the two instances of APM we are going to create today, we are going to uh, specify different ports. And then we have the system port. This is used to connect to APM UI, UI Automator to server by APM. So we will separate this as well. All right, these are uh, mainly all the uh, capabilities we are going to to use today in terms of uh, Android 
let's go ahead and start our first APM server instance. And I will teach you how to uh, start an instance with some already defined capabilities. So the syntax is APM. The first instance is going to remain on the uh, default 4723 port. So I will not change that. And then I will go dash dash default capabilities. And then I will write the capabilities as a JSON format. So the capabilities we we tracked down were ADB port. Be careful that uh, this is case sensitive, so you need to uh, write them exactly as they are. So the ADB port is going to be 5037. And then I'll have a comma and then system port will be 8201. So, and then I will, uh, I will put another capability called new command timeout with a value of zero. So what this does is to keep the APM server session alive while you work on your automatic test. By default, APM server will shut down after uh, 60 seconds of not receiving any command. So with this new command timeout zero, I'm telling APM to never close the server instance under no circumstance, no matter if it receives or not any command. And let's go ahead and also add the automation name as UI Automator 2. All right. If you were on Linux or Mac, this would be enough for you to start your APM instance. But if I try to do this on Windows, look what happens. If you were on Linux or Mac, you wouldn't uh, have to escape the quotation marks because those are characters that are not uh, ignored by default into those terminals. But in the Windows terminal, quotation marks are um, ignored. So as you can see here, although I, I did run the command with quotation marks, uh, the Windows terminal did not take them into consideration. So what I must do is to escape these characters with a backslash. So basically, wherever I see a backslash inside my command, I must include, whenever I see a quotation mark, sorry, I must include a backslash. So backslash here and here and here and here. I will, uh, I will copy this because I will need it to start my second uh, instance. I don't want to type that down uh, from the beginning. So now let's see if this works. Well, there you have it. Your first APM instance is started and I have declared uh, some capabilities. And actually, there is one last, one uh, more capability I want to declare, and that is device name, because I want APM to know which device is configured for which instance. So I will say comma and then uh, device name. Remember what we uh, discussed Last time, in order to see the devices associated to your operating system, you do an ADB devices, and that will show you the two devices available. So 
I will put for the first instance, I will put the first one. Emulator. 5554. And I am also going to uh, escape the quotation marks in this syntax. I will copy again. And I will hit enter. Okay. So our first APM instance is started. Let me let me start the second one. So I will say dash dash port four seven two five. So I will change the default port, which is four seven two three to four seven two five for the second instance. And for the default capabilities, the first ADB port is going to be 5038, and the second system port is going to be 8202. And for my second device name, I will have 5556. Okay, my, uh, my second uh, APM instance is also started so now i can uh write a test case that will start the application on my two devices one after the other for that i will use the already uh declared keyword that is called open chat 21 application but i must uh have an argument for the APM port. So let's go ahead and I will I will create a new variable here and I will say APM port device one and that will be equal to 4723 and APM port device two that is going to be 4725. And then what I'm going to do is to declare an argument inside my OpenChat21 application and I will call it APM port. And then I will replace its value inside here. Usually, what this uh, will do is to break the already uh, written uh, tests that I already have here. So, in each test, I have the Open Chat 21 application. I should be forced to um, declare an argument so that I tell APM which emulator or which device it must use to open the application. But there's a trick that can save you of all of that. If you put um, an implicit value for your argument. So that will be APM port device one. So by default, when this uh, application, when this open chat 21 application keyword is um, is parsed the default value of the APM port should be 4723 so that's for the first instance but if you declare this um, keyword with uh, another argument that argument will actually replace the value that is put here by default and will rewrite it here okay so I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to create a open chat 21 application on first device keyword. And underneath that will have open chat 21 application with the let, let's give it the, the default argument so you can see uh, exactly uh, how this works. And I will have open chat. 21 application on second device 
that should be equal to open chat 21 application and APM port device 2. All right. Let me just um, modify this uh, login uh, test that I previously created. So I want to uh, run the application on my first device and sign in with the first user and then run my application on the second device and log in with my second user. So as keywords, I'm going to have open chat 21 application on first device. I will sign in with the first user and then I will have open chat 21 application on second device and sign in with the second user. So if everything goes well, we should be able to start the two applications on the two devices or emulators and log in with each user. Let's go ahead and see if that works. So I'll type in robot minus D output. And then I will have tests backslash login dot robot. I'm going to maximize this. So first, the application is uh, ongoing on the first device. Login is successful. And now we should see the application starting on the second device. But we do have a problem. We do have a problem because um, the application is running on the same device. So, okay, so I managed to track down the problem that was causing the application to open up only on the first device. And it seems that I've done a typo in my IPM uh, server start command. So here, uh, it, it was not uh, device name and emulator 5554, but it was actually UDID. It was an argument calling for the uh, device's ID. Uh, and that ID is what you see when you uh, start your, uh, when you execute your ADB devices command. So similar to this, I will start it on the second, uh, or I will start the second uh, APM instance. And now we should have a successful application launch on both devices. Okay. First device, first login. And this time, the second application opens on the second device. It bypasses the Android 10 uh, workaround that we put in place into the last video. It logs in with the second user. And there you have it for this video. So today we learned about APM capabilities and how to use them in order to control two or multiple devices. If we, if you have three or more devices, everything you have to do is to have different APM ports. It's good to separate the ADB ports and the system ports for communication. And do not forget to put the ADB, the ID of your device in your uh, list of capabilities so you don't run into the same problem I had today with the application that was starting on one device. Okay, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.